the issue of whether the angels will die between the trumpets being blown. Now the popular opinion amongst most of the Muslim masses and even most of our scholars who wrote about this issue is that the angels will in fact die. What is their evidence for this? Number one, the generality of the Quranic verses that everything and everyone will die and perish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Everything shall be destroyed except for the wajh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from these general verses, a number of our early scholars derive that yes, even the angels will perish. There is another evidence as well. And this is an evidence that is found in a very long hadith in the Musadraq of Al-Hakim, which is extremely weak but there is a phrase in it that the malaika that are with Allah will die and there is a third evidence that the angels will die as well Ibn Kathir says it is a hadith ushtuhir yani everybody knows about it even though its isnad is something that is very very problematic I just wanted to quote you the beginning of it allegedly Abu Huraira said that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he finished creating the heavens and earth he created the trumpet and he handed the trumpet to Israfil and Israfil has forever remained staring at the throne of Allah waiting until Allah will command him Abu Huraira said O Messenger of Allah what is the trumpet the Prophet ﷺ said Qarn a horn that that is blown into. Abu Huraira said, how is it? The Prophet said, it is huge, massive. I swear by the one who controls my soul that one circle of the trumpet is as vast as between the heavens and the earth. And Israfil will blow three times. The first time when Israfil blows, everybody will be terrified. Like Allah says in the Quran, And then the earth will tremble. And then he goes on and on. And then Abu Huraira asked him about the dead people. The Prophet said, the ones who are dead will not hear that trumpet, the first trumpet. And they will be in their graves at peace and it goes on until he says Israfi will then be told to blow it the second time the second time and this will be the nafkha that all who are in the heavens and earth will fall down dead except whom Allah pleases then the malakul maut will come to Allah and he will say oh Allah all the people of the heavens and earth have died except whom you have allowed to live Allah will say who is left the malakul maut will say you are left Left because you are the Hay who does not die, and the carriers of the throne are left, and Jibrail is left, and Mikael is left, and I am left. Allah will say, O Jibreel and Mikael, die. So the Arsh will say, O Allah, you will cause Jibreel and Mikael to die. And Allah will say, Be quiet, for I have written that all who are under the throne shall die. So Jibreel and Mikael will die. Then the Malakul Maut will come and he will say, O Allah, I have taken Jibreel and Mikael. Allah will say, Who is left? He will say, You are left, O Allah, and the carriers of your throne, and I am left. One by one, everybody's gone until who's going to be left Malakul Maut and Allah and then Allah Azza wa Jal will say to the Malakul Maut you are a creation that I have created and so I am telling you to die and so Malakul Maut will die and then no one will be left except Al-Wahid Al-Ahad Al-Samad Laysa Biwalidin Wala Wala Kana Akhiran Kama Kana Awalan and there will be no one left and then Allah will say with his voice and a loud voice Liman Al-Mulku al -yawm. And then finding no one to respond, Allah Azza wa Jal will answer himself, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. And then the hadith goes on. And almost all of us have heard this portion of the hadith as well. As we said, this hadith without a doubt is not authentic. No scholar has ever made it authentic. And from beginning to end, there are issues about it. But as Ibn Kathir said, there are phrases that are authentic in it. In this hadith, there is an evidence that the angels will die. These are the three evidences used that the angels will die. Number one, the generalities of the Quran. Number two, a very weak hadith. Number three, a very weak hadith. Is there any authentic evidence is therefore that the angels will die? Clearly not. Has there been an alternative opinion? Yes, there has been an alternative opinion. Of the earliest of them is a tabari in his tafsir who mentions in more than one place that the angels will not die. And of them is the famous Andalusian scholar, one of the most ingenious and eccentric minds to ever come from Andalus, Ibn Hazm. And he mentions about the death of the angels, what the people have said. And he says, there is no explicit evidence 
nor is there ijma that the angels will die. If there was an evidence, I would have said this. But there's no dalil or burhan that causes us to believe that they will die. And that is actually against common. It doesn't make sense they will die, Ibn Hazm is saying. Because Jannah is a place where there is no death. And the angels we know will be in Jannah. And they were created in Jannah. And they shall live in Jannah. The same he says for the Hurun'een. Why would the Hurun'een die? And Mot, he says, death is the separation of the body from the soul. Meaning the angels don't have a body and a soul. How will death happen? Happen. And our Prophet ﷺ explicitly said the angels have been created from light. So what will be exiting what when the angels are not body and soul? End quote of Ibn Hazm. Al-Wahidi says that when Iblis came to Adam and tempted Adam to eat of the tree, what did Iblis say to Adam? The reason why Allah told you to not eat of this tree is that if you eat, you will become angels or you will become those who live forever. Al-Wahidi says, because angels live forever and do not die. Adam knew that angels don't die. If the angels died, what would be the temptation to eat of the tree? I found this very interesting dalil. Some ulama have also said that the angels do not die based upon the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I seek refuge in you and in your glory, O Allah. You are the one who is la ilaha illa ant. You are the one who does not die and the jinn and the ins die. He did not say Malaika. In the end of the day, not only is there no explicit evidence whether the angels will die or not, but you should know there is no evidence that the angels die at all. Now, somebody will say, but doesn't the Quran explicitly tell us, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ And we say, go back to the verse. Surah Ghafir, verses 15 to 17. Allah says in the Quran, رَفِيعُ الدَّرَجَاتِ ذُو الْعَرْشِ يُلْقِ الرُّوحَ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَمْ is the one who raises the ranks, the one who owns the throne, the one who sends Jibreel to whomever he wants of his creation to warn them of the day of judgment. On that day, they will be in front of everyone. لا يخفى على الله منهم شيء. Nothing will be hidden in front of Allah Azza wa Jal and them. لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار. To whom does the kingdom belong today? To Allah the Wahid the Qahar. Al-Yawma tujza kullu nafsin bima kasabat. Today, everyone will get what they have earned and deserved. Now, today, today, today. All of this, is this before the trumpet or after the trumpet? After the trumpet is blown. Not between the two trumpets. To be clear, the Quran does not indicate that Allah will say, There will be dead silence. Then Allah will answer Himself because no one else responded. Is that plausible to extract from the verse? Yes. It is plausible. And Ibn al-Jawzi in his Zad al-Masir, he says that this phrase, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Everybody says that this will be uttered after this world. But they have differed when upon two opinions. The first of them is that this will be said when, basically between the two trumpets, when no one will be able to respond. And so Allah will respond to Himself. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Allah will say, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ And the second opinion is that this will happen on the day of judgment, meaning after the second trumpet. And if you look up other books of tafsir, you find he is absolutely correct. For example, Ibn Abbas said, once all who are in the heavens and earth are destroyed, and only Allah is left. Allah will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ And no one will be there to respond. So Allah will respond upon Himself. And Allah will say, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ Therefore, according to Ibn Abbas, therefore, this is between the two trumpets. However, a number of other authorities, including Ata and Ibn Mas'ud, they said that this is going to happen after the second trumpet, meaning on the day of judgment. And Ibn Mas'ud said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all all of the creation on the day of judgment and the very first announcement to be made will be an announcer who says not Allah to whom does the kingdom belong today liman al mulk al yawm and ibn mas'ud said all of the creation will respond when the angel says who does the kingdom belong to and all of the creation will testify lillahi al wahid al qahar he totally reverses the narrative Bottom line, between the two trumpets, 
we do not know and nor does it make a difference in our iman who will still remain alive some have said that the entire creation will be destroyed but there's no evidence for this and some have said no only this world and its inhabitants will be destroyed as for the angels and the people of the heavens there is no need to destroy them and while there is no explicit evidence they do have the default that that is the one that makes the more sense 